Hello everyone and welcome back to the Rails 20 and 20 challenge. This is week two, part one. Now I ran into some issues with uh, the first project that I tried to do this week, which was going to be an engine showcase. Uh, I've decided to push that one back because I couldn't figure out how to get Webpacker to work the way I wanted it to. Uh, I then moved on to a portfolio project. The portfolio project's uh, video got corrupted. So now we're doing a restaurant app because I couldn't be bothered to do the portfolio recording a second time this week. Um, so the basic premise of this episode, we are not doing any coding. We're just going to go real quick over a fake freelance gig that you decided to do. So like, let's say you're just starting out with Rails. You go and eat at your favorite local diner. Uh, and the guy that runs the place, Frank, comes up to you and he says, Hey, I heard you're starting to do websites. Uh, would you be interested in doing a website for me for like $200 or something? Uh, you know, you'd say, oh, I don't have that much experience. And he's like, oh, it's fine. I just need something for Google. You know, it's not a not a big deal, but I thought it'd help you out and it might help me out. And you're like, oh, well, okay, sure. It's experience. I can put on my resume. That'd be great. So you go home, you get an email a couple of days later, and this is the, the requirements specification that he sends you. It's not great. Uh, there's redundant information on it. it. He's clearly not passionate about this. Uh, there's also nothing really on here that's challenging. Like you just spent the last three or four weeks learning all these cool Rails features. Like you know how to do like a live chat room. You know how to upload and download images and all that stuff. But he just kind of wants you to have like a basic website from like 2005. So how do you approach this project in a way that allows you to demonstrate some level of creativity so if you put this on a resume you're it's something that will get you a job while also fulfilling frank's requirements and not slowing the website down with unnecessary features or like you know sort of giving off those novice vibes that's sort of what we're trying to accomplish this week so it's going to be a bit of a different setup than week one but i think this will actually be really helpful it's not all about Rails this time. So, you know, we're going to cover a little bit of Photoshop. We're going to cover translating these requirements into a diagram, stuff like that. But for this first part, we're just going to read through this and we're going to see what we think. So the first thing we see, uh, you know, here's the requirements. Very basic design is OK. Just need something for Google that shows menu and prices. It will make pickup orders easier for us when customers call in. So maybe he's like setting this up now that we've had this pandemic. Uh, and he like wants a website so that people can look at the menu so they know what to do when they call in and he doesn't have to like send out menus or read the menu to people over the phone. Um, so then, you know, the homepage, he just needs a link to the other pages and a picture of the restaurant so people know what it looks like. That's kind of weird, but OK, sure, we can just put a picture. We'll ask him for a picture of the restaurant or if he doesn't have like a high quality camera, maybe one of our friends does or maybe we do. I mean, we all have smartphones these days. We can take like 8K pictures. So, um, you know, we could probably just take the picture ourselves if we need to. But sure, the homepage, just a couple links. Uh, the menu should have the name of the item, the description and the price. OK, so just a list of food, I guess. It's kind of boring. I guess the descriptions like the ingredients in the food or how it's prepared. So maybe like it's a, you know, garlic and cheese pizza and it's like yeah this pizza's garlic cheese and it's free range dough it was raised on a farm in upstate new york or something but okay so we go to the catering menu uh it's basically the same thing except for catering so a little bit redundancy there maybe we can just make like all items the same item type and then we just add in a boolean that says this is a catering item and then we just show those on the catering menu or like in the main menu, we show all the items. And if they're also available for catering, we say like this is available for catering or something like that. Uh, and then there's another menu which just says name of the item description and the price. So maybe that's like the uh, prices menu and there's just a typo there. It seems like, you know, a little off. So I guess we can contact him and we can see what he thinks about this one. Uh, we'll just remove that for now, I guess, and maybe like add a note to ourselves that says like check into this. Um, there's also the location and the hours. So, you know, just an address page, I guess we can probably throw in like a Google plugin or something or maybe just a screenshot or a picture of a Google Maps thing. Um, and then additional notes, if you could track the number of visitors, that'd be nice, but not expected. The last guy told us he couldn't do it. So if it isn't possible, that's fine. So like maybe the last person who made this website didn't 
know how to make a dynamic website. He only had like a static front page from 2005 or something. Uh, or that's all he could do. We know how to do this. Like we made our blog last week. It's just a simple integer that you increment every time a page loads. Uh, if we need to change the menu urgently, is that possible? We could pay extra when we need something changed. So this is an interesting question because you actually have like a few different approaches to this one. The first is you could just say, yeah, man, I'll change it, you know, 20 bucks. Sure. Uh, the other thing is you could set up a system where he could update it himself. You'll lose out on the money of, you know, this like fee for doing a quick update in the database, but it, it'll save you some time. You know, the 20 bucks sounds nice, but if they're constantly contacting you, who knows? But also it's always important to sort of balance like these small fees versus the feedback that you would get if you were to list him as a reference if you were to like just add in that extra feature, which will take you maybe 10 minutes. And in in exchange for that, you know, you have a customer who will give you glowing reviews. That's sort of what we're looking at here. We're probably leaning towards like, let's just give him an admin page where he can edit the menu himself and, you know, make the ability to edit the images and like some of the featured items or stuff. And it'll just make his life easier. It'll make your reference better. And, you know, when you put this on a resume and you link to the project or something with Frank's permission, of course, you know, the employer is going to look at it and you know, you can explain, oh, there's an admin panel that handles all this stuff. The employer's going to look at it and say, oh, so all these images, the, the person running it can manage. That's pretty cool. That's the basic gist of what the requirements are. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, how we're going to get these images and what we're going to do to load them more quickly. So obviously, if you have like a project like this, you're going to get your images from Frank. He's going to send you pictures of the inside of the place, pictures of the outside of the place, or maybe you'll go take the pictures. But for the purposes of this, like, you know, mock thing, we don't have pictures. Um, so we're going to go to unsplash.com, which is totally free stuff. You can use it for anything. Um, the only thing they ask is that, you know, you credit people, which you don't have to, but it is the nice thing to do. So you just come in here and you're like, okay, I want a restaurant exterior photo or something. Uh, so you come in here and you grab like one of these pictures and that's just going to be like our homepage or whatever. So you wouldn't do this necessarily in a real project like this because you want Frank's pictures. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be grabbing some images off of Unsplash. I'll show you how to edit them in Photoshop. So this is like the image that we have here in Photoshop. So I grab the image, I blur it, and I have the credit down here. We'd probably use this for like the menu, I guess. So if I like come over here and I switch to the rectangle tool, let me switch the colors. I don't know if that works. I'm not really the biggest Photoshop person, but like we switch the fill to white. Um, and then I guess we can like draw another rectangle right here. Uh, and we can switch this fill to black. And then we can create some text up here. Uh, and we can say like Frank's foods. Uh, and we'll switch this text to white so it stands out. And we'll bump up the text size a bit. There we go, cool. And then we can just reposition this in the center. So maybe you have something like this with like your links in the top left. So like this is your, you know, your homepage uh, and then menu and then uh, catering uh, and then, I don't know, like your info page or something. So we just grab all this, we move down here and then we can um, grab these and reduce the size a bit. So it just looks a bit more like you would expect. And also we'll reduce the vertical line height like this, and then we can just move this up. So you might have a page like this. Uh, so the background's blurred out just so things are easier to read. You have like your basic thing right here. And then in here you have all your food. So this might be like the actual menu page. So maybe we like just grab this and make the stroke red. So you can see that this is like an outline for the page that you're actually on or something. So I'm going to show you how to create this image just for the sake of making this application look a bit better. Because if you do throw it on a portfolio, you know, people are going to look at this and be like, wow, that background is actually interesting and engaging or whatever. So we're going to, we're going to go through that with Photoshop. It's going to be, you know, a quick video or something and, uh, or a quick section in the video. Um, the other thing is when we have these images, we want to cache them so that the website loads faster. Like if we're going, if we go from like the home page to the menu page, and this is a 4k image, uh, if we cache it, you'll only take the hit once because it's not like the home page is ever going to change really, uh, cause it's a pretty basic website. So we'll cover caching and all of that other good stuff. Um, is there anything else I've ever got to talk about? 
Uh, well, I mean, we'll do like the admin panel and I'll cover a bit more of that because I think there's a couple features that I could show you how to do there. Um, like maybe we want a reviews page. So like a place for customers to leave their reviews. So we'll say like customer reviews, question mark. And um, maybe, maybe we don't know if Frank wants this. So what we do is we just create a Boolean that in the, lets him go into the admin panel and enable or disable the customer reviews. And then in the controller, we say, yes, we want this customer review or no, he doesn't want customer reviews. And then he can just update it as he sees fit. Maybe he only wants reviews in the summer when the place looks better. Uh, and during the winter, he like turns off the page or something. So we'll go through all that and we'll make sure that it's a feature rich application, but that Frank ultimately has control over in case all he really wants is something for the front page of Google. <laughs>